Hello, good evening to you. Welcome to Business. Energy Minister John Peter Mewu has urged the West African gas company not to impose high tariffs on gas it supplies to Ghana. According to him, consumers will not accept any unrealistic tariffs as there are other cheaper power sources. Peter Mewu was speaking at the West Africa Committee of Energy Ministers meeting here in Accra. The minister used the occasion to call on the energy regulator for the sub-region, the West African Gas Authority, to allow Ghana to use existing facilities of the West Africa Power Company to assist in transporting gas from Takradi to Tema. The West African Gas Company, WAPCO, transports gas from Nigeria through the West African pipeline to Ghana and other West African countries at a cost of $5 per standard cubic feet. This, according to the Minister of Energy, Peter Mewu, is not competitive compared with the rates in other sub-regions and current conditions in the sector. He said the proposal that was submitted by WAPCO during the tariff proposal consultation process is not competitive as the country can only afford afford one dollar per standard cubic feet. It is important to underscore that we live in a world of competition. Cash is fungible and we will move to where it would take the best use in terms of return on its investment. If the delivered gas price is prohibitive, Compared to other alternative fuels, gas will therefore become very hard to sell. We therefore expect WAPCO, the pipeline company, to try not to assume that there is a captive market for them and that any rates charge will be accepted by consuming nations. Meanwhile, Chief Executive of the West African Power Company, Walter Perez, declined commenting on the minister's call, but expressed confidence that both parties will have a win-win agreement at the end of the meeting. I mean, if, if, uh, if the tariff doesn't make sense, why would we, uh, why, why would we uh, uh, move ahead? But, you know, but we have made substantial progress together. We fully expect that we will find a solution. All parties want to find a win-win. And we're here today seeking a win-win that works for, for everybody in the value chain. So, but you I, heard I, the Ghana energy minister, I mean, his words signal that they're not ready to back down. Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. You know, I, I think uh, that, uh, that's why this meeting occurs today. You know, we, we uh, hope that, uh, you know, cool heads and reasonable men will prevail in, in uh, the deliberations uh, with each other today. Ghana's quest to build a petrochemical industry in the western region creates another opportunity for both parties to agree on terms beneficial to the citizens. Domestic airline Passion Air has commenced commercial flights to Takrade in a bid to boost economic activities in the western region. The new route brings to three total destinations plied by the airline. Commercial manager for Passion Air, Anita Kuri, has been speaking to Joy Business at the Takrade airport. Sheila Tamaklu was on the inaugural flight and has come through with this report. Upon receiving its third aircraft, today Passion Air made its novel flight to Takrade. This is because the airline is planning to commence commercial flights to this particular sector. Now, according to the Deputy Minister for Aviation, Pavna Otre Dakum, this is welcome news as frequent flights to this area could boost economic activities. Now that there's competition, naturally we expect prices to fall. That gives the people of Takrad an opportunity to also make use of the safest means of transportation. And then two, it's also going to be, uh, going to be a necessity because a lot of the people here are into a lot of businesses and they will need to go and come as quickly as possible to expand their operation and expand their businesses. Secondly, ever since Pasha decided to come to Takrad, at least they've been able to employ 20 people. Okay, so for us, we've immediately gotten a benefit. These people didn't come from Accra. These people are people from Security Accra and this environment. So we are very grateful. We believe that more airlines will cancel, more people will get opportunity to be employed. And then, uh, like you know, government is also planning to set up a new um, Takara International Airport. We 
because we believe that Western region contributes over 60% to national GDP. A lot of businesses would like to have some kind of investment in this area. We need to give them the safest means to transport themselves wherever they are in the world to, to, the, to, 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 to Ghana. The airline is commencing with 270 Ghana cities one way to Tepradi and 477 Ghana city for the two way. Anita Kuri is the head of commercial for Passion Airlines and she'll be giving us more details. Uh, we plan on commencing on Monday, 10th December, uh, with twice daily frequencies, except on Sundays where we'll operate uh, one, one uh, flight, that is to Takrade and return to, uh, from Takrade. Uh, we are, our starting fare is 270. Ghana cities. Its return is a discount, so you would have a discount return of 477. That is the minimum. Um, now, we all know that Takrade is the oil city, right? So, and we have had so many requests of um, coming in because of the lack of uh, seats available. We already know one competitor is serving the route, so we think that there's more demand for this for Takrade. Reporting for Joy Business from the Takrade Airport, that is the oil city. My name is Sheila Tamako. Fidelity Bank says its target is to be among the top three banks in the country within the next five years. This was after it announced on Friday it has met the new minimum capital requirement of 400 million CDs set by the Bank of Ghana. The bank achieved this feat after shareholders passed a special resolution to move 50 million CDs from income surplus to already existing stated capital. Board Chairman Edward Ifa has been speaking to Joy Business's George Riafi. We have just completed an extraordinary general meeting of shareholders and the purpose of the EGM was to pass a resolution to transfer an additional 50 million from reserves to stated capital. Mm. Um, we have a deadline of 31st December to meet, the, to meet the minimum capital requirement for banks and therefore we couldn't have passed this resolution after 31st December. So we have to complete the minimum capital requirement process before the end of the year. So to do that, we audited our financial statement for the nine months to 30th September, which all the auditors audited in October, and which we have presented to shareholders, um, because you cannot move surplus funds to stated capital without audited financial statements. Um, so that was the purpose of the EGM, and also to apprise shareholders of the performance of the bank for the year to date. So if you help me out, I understand you had already 345 million Ghana cities yes. and they were just moving income surplus to the main accounts, right? Yes. So um, before the EGM, our stated capital was 345 million. And with the EGM, we've passed a resolution to transfer 50 million from surplus funds to stated capital, which will take our capital, our stated capital, above the 400 million minimum. What is the regulatory requirement? I remember previously we had reports even engaging some banks who were saying that investors were waiting to see that numbers changing to 400 before they deal with them. With respect to the regulatory requirement, when would the auditing process be completed for everyone to see that indeed we verify the numbers and Fidelity even has more than 400 million Ghana cities? We have had our numbers audited. Our financial statements were audited for the year to 30th September. So we don't have any doubts or any further auditing or verification to go through. So we have met the minimum capital requirement with the passing of the resolution today to transfer the 50 million from surplus funds to stated capital. Um, the central bank has made it very clear that the minimum capital requirement should be met by the end of the year. So by the end of the year, banks should either have met it or not met it. Um, I can't speak for other banks, but we have met it. And that's all in business for now. Many thanks for watching. For more business news, log on to myjoinline.com slash business. Have a good evening.